Hey guys, Amanda here. Happy Homestead. We're out at the farm today and I am legit <laughs> nervous and a little scared. Um, sorry, that's my husband on the tractor. Because I am going to attempt splitting our bees today. The weather, we're in North Carolina and it's the end of March and it's consistent high 60s, low 70s. And there are already been reports of some swarms um, within our local beekeeping group. So I am trying to proactively split our honeybees so we don't lose any of them. So a swarm happens when the queen takes half of the bees and leaves right now before she leaves the the bees are preparing for this and they create these what's called swarm cells and it's these big little caps it's a queen it's basically a new queen that they're trying to grow and they do more than one there's usually three to five swarm cells in a hive and so they're growing a new queen and they're preparing for the old queen to leave right it's just part of what bees do to help repopulate and, and grow their uh, species so the queen takes half of the bees and she leaves. Well, bees are money, my friend. <laughs> to buy a package or a nuke is what they can call a package or a nuke of bees. It's anywhere from $150 to $250, depending on the kind and where you buy, etc. So last year I successfully split our bees and then one of the hives did kind of flounder out and died last fall maybe. So we were down to one hive. So. I'm going to split this hive. I'm going to look, I'm going to do an inspection, find my queen, hopefully find some swarm cells and I can go ahead and do a split. But I'm scared and nervous because you may remember from last year, <laughs> these bees are so aggressive. My husband and I were just talking about this. I don't know if the queen mated with some other bee, but they seem to be some sort of hybridized bee. And they weren't that way when we bought them two years ago. Something has happened and they are so aggressive. So I'm gonna suit up. I've got long pants, long shirt. I'm going to put my bee suit on, which is what I need to start doing, and my boots. And I am going to try really hard to not get attacked, but I kind of already know what's gonna happen. I'm just, I'm mentally preparing myself for this. So I've never had this like irrational, I shouldn't even say irrational, cause it's kind of rational at this point, but I've never had this kind of fear and intrepidation with our bees. Um, it's always been fine, right? And we've gotten stung. I've gotten stung many of times, but this is different. I had probably like a thousand bees all over me trying to sting me. Some of them were successful in getting through the clothing. And so then when they're on you, they don't just get off. <laughs> they don't just leave. I remember I had to walk down the street for like half a mile and they still hadn't left. So I know that after I am done splitting them, I can't take my suit off. I've got to keep the suit on and I'm probably gonna go walk through the woods and do some mushroom hunting, <laughs> but with my suit on. And hopefully the bees will just peter out and kind of like leave me alone at some point. I've got sugar water, because after I split them, I wanna feed them, keep them there. And again, I'm only splitting, I have to do an inspection which basically means going through each of the frames, which again, like, I'm so, I'm like, I'm so nervous, <laughs> scares me because I'm, I, I'm gonna get attacked. Um, and I know what a lot of the beekeepers are gonna, are like screaming through their screen right now is use a smoker. I have a smoker. <laughs> I plan on using one. It didn't really help last time, but I have one and I'm going to be using it. I also have, this Fisher's Bee Quick, and it's basically a bunch of essential oils that the bees don't like. It's the scent that don't like them. I'm going to spray myself with this um, and see if that helps too in keeping them off of me and away from me.
Okay, let's do this. I don't know how much I'm gonna be talking during my work. So I'm gonna kind of explain to you what I'll be doing. And the first thing is, is I'm gonna check the empty hive first. I think there's frames in there. So I need to make sure there's frames. I'm gonna take off the bottom boards. The bottom boards are used in winter to help keep air drafts out and whatnot. And we don't need to worry about that anymore. We now need the bottom boards off to let enough circulation come in. So I'm gonna take the bottom boards off both hives. You're going to see three hives on the stand. The middle hive, the middle hive is empty. So the aggressive bees are on one side and I'm going to be moving them, half of them, all the way to the other side. Marmar, I don't want you to get stung, sweet boy. And that's what's going to happen. All right, so looking at the hives right now, it's the hive on the most right. The rightmost hive, that is the aggressive one, and the other two are empty. So I don't know if the camera turned off or not, or if you caught it on camera, but I finally found the queen. She was not in any of the bottom frames. She was in the top. So as soon as I found her, I very quickly put her in the new hive along with, I think, five or six frames of bees. And you want to include larvae, you want to include brood, which larvae are like baby bees, like really, really baby bees. They almost look like little worms. And then the brood or the eggs. So I had a lot of bees, a lot of brood, a lot of larvae. And then the existing hive has still so many bees. You could probably see that. So they now need to make a new queen. And I left them pr plenty of brood as well, eggs, so that they can make a queen. So I am very pleased with how that went. It's the best it could have gone. I didn't see any swarm cells. Like I don't think they were getting ready to swarm, but it doesn't mean that it wouldn't have happened in a few weeks. So by doing the split, it helps trick the bees because they realize now their queen is gone, her scent is gone, she's gone, as well as a bunch of their friends. <laughs> and they think, oh, she must have left we need to make a new queen. And so that's that's the phenomenon that you're trying to recreate. And then obviously with the new hive, they're gonna realize, oh, this is a new home. And I gave them plenty of empty frames so that they can fill them up and have something to do, right? I gave them both a lot of sugar water. And so they have food. Food is the hugest thing to keep bees where they are. And pray it all goes well. Also, last note, the Fisher Bee Quick I think that was the key because I couldn't get my smoker to work. And look, there are no bees on me. There's a couple down there on the, on the wagon, but I really think that was the key to not having a thousand bees on me and get stung. I'm, I'm really floored by that. I'm so excited about that, that I had the idea to do it. Um, I just have to be careful, right? I don't want to spray too much, but just enough to keep them off of me and away. So all in all, I'm pleased with how today went. 
I'm gonna keep my bee gear on because I don't wanna get a rogue bee that just comes and sting me. And I'm gonna go hunt, hunting through the woods. I'm gonna go some mushroom hunting. Um, morel season, mush, if you're familiar with morels, it's like the creme de la creme for mushrooms. And that season is just beginning. So I'm gonna go check to see if there are any. I'll see you next time. Thanks for coming along on our bee split journey. Stay healthy, stay well, bye-bye.